I'm Sean Ryan. Um, I'm in the 20th anniversary tour of Rent, and I'm the dance captain, swing, and mark understudy. Being a part of this show is just so amazing because it's really like a legacy that I get to be a part of because it started 20 something years ago and it's still relevant and it's still something that people want to see and a story that needs to be told. And so the fact that I get to be a part of that is just like so amazing. As a swing, I cover all the male ensemble tracks. Um, so there's four male ensemble tracks that I cover and I also understudy Mark. So I have five total tracks to know that I can be called into at any moment, even during the show. Um, if something happens, I just have to be ready to go on for any of those tracks. So I cover Mark, Gordon, Steve, Paul, and Mr. Jefferson. As dance captain, I have to um, be the eyes for the choreographer that doesn't travel with us. Um, so I'm in charge of maintaining the choreography of the show and making sure that it doesn't change over time uh, because we do so many shows um, for a long period of time that it gets kind of hard to do the same thing every night. Uh, but it's my job to make sure that the integrity of the show is always there. Um, the biggest surprise of touring with Rent is really just the fan, the fan base. Uh, because they're so involved in the show. Um, I've never been a part of a show that has such a strong fan base. Um, there'll, there'll be people screaming at the stage door and like knowing our names and knowing my name, even if I don't perform, like knowing who I am, what I do in the show. Uh, they're just diehard Rent fans, and it's so cool to have that like energy um, every night because other tours that I've done haven't been like that. So that's the biggest surprise for Rent. <laughs> yeah, so Rent, <laughs> it's funny. Rent first entered my life, um, I think I was in ninth or 10th grade. And I obviously have heard of Rent, but I never really listened to the music. I never really did anything with it um, until I auditioned for a community theater production of Rent. And I sang one song, Glory, and just was not good and didn't get a call back, didn't get an offer, didn't get anything. And that was how I <laughs> started learning about Rent. Um, and then I finally like listened to the soundtrack and was like, oh, this is really cool. And then watched the movie and everything grew from there. And here I am now. My first tour was Fame, the musical. Um, and I was in the ensemble and I understudied Nick Piazza. And that show really taught me how to understudy a role, um, as well as learn one ensemble track. Um, and a funny story about fame is that I did go on for Nick Piazza once, and it was 10 minutes into a show that we already started, um, because the guy who was playing Nick Piazza was injured in the opening number. And so I had to be thrown on into the show after we already started. Um, and so I had to finish the show as Nick Piazza, and that really taught me that I needed to be prepared for anything. Um, and then Cinderella, I toured with Cinderella, and that was my first swing job. Um, and that show taught me how to swing, obviously, because I had seven tracks to learn for Cinderella. Um, and it's a very intense dance show, so that really taught me how to swing, how to learn how to be on stage and know what all the other guys are doing around me. And that really helped me as a performer and as a swing to know, okay, this person's gonna cross this way and then I have to go here and then this person is gonna come behind me. And like all of that stuff um, came together to work on my swing brain. Um, and so going into Rent, I felt very confident um, in my swing abilities and in my performance abilities. Um, and then being thrown in as a dance captain really was the new challenge. So I'm lucky that each tour that I've done, there's been like an added layer of challenges and that's just helped me grow so much as a performer. So my first track that I did for Rent in a performance was for Gordon um, and that was in Indianapolis. And that was stressful but so exciting 
um, because we've already been touring for a couple weeks at that point. This was our last city of America before we took it to um, Asia. So I have already, I watched the show a lot and I knew my stuff, so that was good. Um, it was just the jitters of like doing it for the first time in front of an audience that's always like a swings nightmare and dream, you know what I mean? At the same time, um, being able to per finally perform your track, but finally performing your track in front of an audience. It, it was scary, but it was so exciting. And just taking my bow for that show and hearing everyone cheering and like being with my cast and all of them like smiling at me and stuff, it was awesome. Oh boy, okay, the first time I went on for Mark was in Shanghai and that was just such an emotional show. Um, obviously, I'm amazing friends with the guy who plays Mark um, and it was sad to not have him there. Um, so it was like bittersweet, so excited to go on, but not excited that he had to miss a show, you know what I mean? Um, but doing it was just so amazing. Um, it's been a dream role of mine for a very long time. Um, ever since I started learning Rent, um, I knew I wanted to play Mark. Um, I love his songs, love everything about him. Um, and so getting to do that for the first time was just so amazing. It was so amazing. Um, I just wish it were in the States so my parents could see it, but that's okay. Um, it was just so, I mean, I can't even like put it into words, like how amazing it felt to do that, to live a dream of mine. So the first time I ever went to New York City was my senior year of high school, and I was auditioning for NYU. Um, and my mom took me to see Chicago because <laughs> we did a production of Chicago at my high school uh, my junior year. So she wanted to see Chicago to like bring it full circle. Um, so Chicago was my first Broadway show that I ever saw, um, but I loved it. And it just made me want to do this career even more. Taking Rent to Japan and China was just such an amazing experience. Um, and I think what we are all bringing back from that experience is just to, it sounds cliche, but to really measure your life in love and live as if there were no day but today. Um, and those are the messages of the show, obviously, but it really like opened our eyes to be doing that show in foreign countries and to people that don't always get to experience a show like that um, because they're, it's just a different cultural world over there and they don't always get to see two men in love or two women in love or people just fighting for like their love. So it was so cool to see how it affects someone who doesn't always get to see that and it just made it mean so much more to us. So bringing it back to the States, it really opened our eyes to what we really get to do and how how lucky we are. Fans seeing this production of Rent um, definitely get the same story, the same music, the same everything, the same costumes, the same set from the original Broadway show, but I think the fans now, because we are in such a different um, age where social media is so big and um, everything is about Instagram and likes and who's following who, that this show really brings it back to um, like every life before that and what really matters to someone and what really um, drives someone. Um, and so Rent, we get to show love and show everything that comes with that um, without the pressures of like social media and posting about things. Um, and so I think the fans who maybe didn't get a chance to see Rent on Broadway or the younger fans, it just opens their eyes to, wow, this is a story that has nothing to do with technology, nothing to do with anything. It's just about like personal relationships and love and fighting for what you want and fighting for what you love and surviving. And that is so 
often forgotten about nowadays. Um, so yeah, I think that is what, it's just a good remember, remembrance? Cut that. Um, <laughs> it's, a good, uh, it's a good way to remember um, what's really important in life. <sighs> Some of my dream roles are any angel in kinky boots. That is a dream role. Dream roles, any of them. Um, all six of them. So if you're casting, hire me. Um, Fiero and Wicked. But here's the thing. If I were to be in Wicked, I would want to be the ensemble Fiero cover because I just love dancing in, like, in the ensemble. And also that show is just so amazing um, that I would love to get to do both. Be in the ensemble and go on for Fiero sometimes. So that would also be a dream of mine. And then anything in Spring Awakening is a huge dream of mine. Um, any role in that, specifically Melchior. Um, but yeah, anything in Spring Awakening. In China, we had so many loving fans and adoring fans, um, and they would bring gifts to the stage door. Um, and one fan specifically ran up to me after a show. Um, I was leaving the theater and she shouts, Sean, Sean. And I'm like, yeah. And I didn't perform that night. So I was like, how, who does this, how does this person know me? Um, but then again, they know everyone in the show. So that was just so amazing. She runs up to me and she has this giant unicorn balloon in her hands. And she said, this is for you. And I said, for me? This is for me? Um, and she's like, yes, it's for you. And so I had this giant unicorn balloon that I got from a fan after a show. Um, and I deflated it and I brought it home with me. So maybe one day I can blow it back up. And so I still have it. If I had to place all my tracks into Hogwarts houses, um, Mr. Jefferson would definitely be a Hufflepuff. Um, Mark, as much as I would want him to be a Gryffindor, I think he's a Ravenclaw. Um, Steve is definitely a Ravenclaw. Yeah, and oh, Gordon. Gordon is definitely a Slytherin, without a doubt. If anyone knows the show, they would see him and be like, that's a Slytherin. Um, and Paul is a Gryffindor. Paul definitely is a Gryffindor. This one is so easy. Great. If, well, I mean, I have one song in general, but if Mark were to throw a rager <laughs> and he had to make a playlist of five current pop songs, the first one would obviously be Thank You Next by Ariana Grande because he is so grateful for his ex Maureen. Um, and anything after that, ooh, Party for One by Carly Rae Jepsen because he's pretty much alone all the time. So he always has a party for one. Um, maybe this is not current, but maybe Single Ladies by Beyonce because he is a single lady. The message that I hope fans take away from our show is to really think about the love in your life. Um, I know it's so easy to forget about that and just be so caught up in the moment of how you're feeling and who made you mad and who made you sad. Um, but at the end of the day, like all we really have is each other. Um, and it's so important to remember who you love and who loves you. And no matter how you're feeling that day or um, what's upsetting you, just to go back and focus on the love in your life because it really is so important and it, it can, I don't even, I can like cure people of anything, you know what I mean? Um, so it's so important to remember the love. So when we went to the Great Wall of China, um, we're up there and I look in the distance and I see a little redhead on the Great Wall of China. So naturally, I run up to him and he, he actually said first, I like your hair color. And I said, I like your hair color. Um, and then we took a picture together. Um, and it was just so funny seeing that because obviously in China, 
red hair is not the most common. Um, so seeing a fellow redhead on the Great Wall of China, especially one so little, was just so funny. I loved it. <laughs> My favorite track that I've performed so far would have to be Mark, and not even just because he's a principal, um, but because he really does tell the story. And he, I know he's on stage all the time, but he really gets to go through an emotional journey. Um, and that, as an actor, is just like so much fun. My advice for potential swings is to really just pay attention to everything. Um, I know swings often don't get a chance to get up on their feet and rehearse with the cast. Um, so we're usually sitting off to the sides, um, taking notes and everything. Um, but as a swing, it's so important to focus on all the little details um, because those are the things that can like make or break your performance when you're on. Um, and if you have all the little details and all the little nuances of every track, um, you can fit into it seamlessly. And that's obviously a goal of a swing, is to have no one even know that something has changed in the show.